my work really draws on uh, the feelings associated with loss and abandonment um, and with inhabiting that sort of that space that's in neither one place or another that the feeling of being um, removed from one place and put in another and much of my work really explores that. My artwork is autoethnographic so I'm, I'm using myself as a as a, as a research tool really. Um, as a baby I was adopted um, in, the, in the 1970s and went through two foster carers quite early on as a, as a, as a young baby before um, being permanently placed as an adoptee. From the age of 12 I, I, was, I was sent to boarding school. I think my adoptive family's experience of boarding school was, was a good healthy experience. Um, I didn't find that experience myself um, to be a good or healthy experience and, and uh, feel very much like it was a, an experience that I had to survive. I then reunited with, with my um, birth family um, about, sort of, uh, I think, 12, 13 years ago now. I'm a sculptor, um, but I also uh, draw and, and paint and actually I'm looking at, at the boundaries of all of those so I want my kind of artwork to be on the cusp of whether it's drawing or whether it's a piece of sculpture or whether it's a painting I want it to kind of inhabit those spaces. Things like taking the brush hair out of the artist's brush and replacing it with pencil leads. The pencil lead nests that, that I make, uh, they're made from mechanical pencil leads, thousands of them. Um, interconnected and I'm, I'm after creating that transitional space that uh, both sits on the cusp of, of two genres of art so it's sitting on the cusp of, of being both a sculpture and a drawing uh, and I'm almost ambivalent to that I've, I'm exploring the ambivalence of uh, trying to be one thing trying to be another almost not bothered about about the two things and interested in the casting experience because it is about forcing a material into another shape, and into another form. And just drawing on, again, my experience of being an adoptee moved from one place to another, moving that material from one shape into another shape. And similarly, and mirroring really that experience of, of boarding school being taken away from one space and forced into another space. There are a few uh, images that, that I uh, will refer to, um, certainly in my paintings. And for instance, uh, a painting of uh, a, a payphone, the, the same payphone that I, I remember as a, as a boarded child being the one phone for um, 40, 50 uh, young people to be able to contact home. It's, it's really interesting talking to my children now and the concept of this phone being attached to a wall and not being with you on your person and part of your personal space. I remember having to be connected to that wall and people walking past as so I was having often quite challenging private com and upsetting conversations uh, with, my, with my adoptive family asking to, to come home away from boarding school. I use artwork certainly to express my feelings around my childhood experience and probably to understand it in some ways. As an adoptee, uh, the, certainly from the 70s, uh, voices were silenced. Uh, it wasn't something that was talked about openly. Being able to be open about uh, those feelings associated with, with those experiences is actually really helpful in, in ensuring that the reunion that's ongoing with my birth family is continues to be successful and it is it's just really really critical to be able to have our voices heard <laughs>